Yes, hi. Um, I'm Nicholas from Sturries here. And uh, I'd like to thank the event organizers for inviting me to this event uh, to give this talk. All right, so before I begin, um, just want to clarify a few trivial typo errors. Uh, as you can tell from the program sheet, uh, as you can hear from my accent, I'm not from US, although I would like to be. I'm actually from sunny Singapore, where the weather is hot and nice. Right, so I'm actually currently suffering uh, from a flu. So um, you know the cold weather here and the, and the smoke is not really helping it. But please bear with me, all right? Because from time to time I'll be just sticking out my nose. Right? And the other thing is that um, uh, second thing is that <clears throat> I actually have a, a bachelor's degree, uh, uh, not a medical degree or PhD, uh, but it's stated as Doctor Nicholas in the program sheet. But if you are, if you want to call me Doctor Nicholas, I'm more than well, welcome. All right. <laughs> Okay, so now we can come to the meat of today's uh, talk. I'll be presenting on any, uh, animal facility biodecontamination using VHP. So this is what I'll be talk talking about. What is VHP? How does it work? How do you go about detecting it? Before I talk about two case studies, one in Singapore, one in India, before wrapping up. And you can go for your tea. So what is VHP and how does it work? So, <clears throat> for us at Sturridge, we call our liquid hydrogen peroxide, we call it Vaprox. It's made out of 35% hydrogen peroxide and 65% WFI. All right, 35% hydrogen peroxide, 65% WFI, water for injection. All right, this is how it looks like, the container. And this is the chemical formula, for those of you who are very familiar with chemistry. All right, and the technology. All right, how does it work? So basically, we have the liquid hydrogen peroxide, and we want to vaporize it. That means we increase heat to it, and such that it becomes uh, from a liquid vaporized to a, a gaseous state. And it's in, in this gaseous state that which is actually the most sporocidal. It kills the most range of microbes, which I'll talk about very shortly. And it's at working at low concentration at across a low <laughs> temperature, right? And when it breaks down, hydrogen peroxide actually breaks down into water vapor and oxygen, both of which are in the gaseous stage. So there's no toxic uh, residues. Okay, so this is the range of microbes. Uh, for those of you who are very familiar with microbiology, uh, you probably know that this is uh, the microbes that you can uh, feel very familiar with. Uh, VHP actually kills microbes from the viruses, all the way to fungi, bacteria, and the spores. All right, and for the spores, the most hardest to kill is uh, this Bacillus thermophilus, uh, which we actually use that as our biological indicator. So why do you want to use VHP technology? Right? So we actually want to use it to decontaminate uh, surfaces, rooms, uh, filters, HVACs, uh, even HEPA filters. Right? And it's really good for clean, sterile environments, right? not to mention lab facilities as well. OK, this is a very key slide here, uh, which I'd like to share with all of you. Um, this is the whole VHP process, and how does it work? This is the VHP process. One you can see is actually the, the first stage is dehumidification. We want to actually reduce the relative humidity in the enclosure. Let's say percent. All right. So this line here is actually the RH. All right. This point here is actually the VHP concentration. Right. The blue line. And this one is the RH. And, and the second stage we actually start to condition. It's conditioning whereby we start to inject uh, this vaprox into the area. And you'll notice that actually the RH shoots up. All right. Probably just to emphasize, the RH shoots up because Vaprox is actually 35% hydrogen peroxide and 65%. Water. For those of you who answer water point, that's very good. You can claim for your free tea later. Okay? Okay. So water for injection, 65%. That's why the RH shoots up. And then we actually, you can see that's the blue line, the concentration shoots up. And th those of you who are also familiar with steam sterilization, you, you know that you probably have to steam sterilize 121 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes. All right, so likewise for decontamination, we actually want to actually bring it to a whole level, a, high, a certain high PPM level, let's say between around 200 and 300 PPM, and we want to hold it for a certain period. All right, so these are our factors. We actually have a special, special team to uh, analyze as well as determine that. 
we call them the cycle development experts. So they will actually will come and analyze your area, your room layout, uh, airflow, etc. And they will actually determine how much PPM to achieve and how much uh, time to, to hold. For example, a few hours, for example. And after that, after this third stage decontamination is the last stage, which is aeration. So we want to get rid of the gas uh, in the facility. We can actually send it out through exhaust or we actually break it down through a catalytic converter. And when it breaks down, it breaks down into water, vapor, and oxygen gas. All right. So, two key things that, uh, that from this key slide here. One is that you notice that in the aeration part, uh, the time taking is actually the longest. And that's because it takes time for a gas to actually be absorbed. And it takes time, more time for the gas to dissolve. It's just like when you go for a barbecue. Uh, after a barbecue, you have nice food, uh, night nice meal, and uh, when you go back home, you smell your clothes, your clothes still smell off the smoke. Right? So the same analogy, right? So when it takes, after the fumigation, it takes more time to actually desop the VHP gas from the area. Right? Because this gas, it permeates everywhere. And secondly, you notice the other line here, this yellow line here, is uh, condensation. All right. For us as stories, we actually maintain uh, our technology such that uh, our VHP gas remains in a gaseous phase because once it actually crosses this line, it becomes a uh, liquid. All right, so there's a lot of, uh, I'm sure some of you may actually know of uh, other technologies out there that actually use the mist or the fog, uh, or they call it the dry fog. Uh, well, it's actually still a uh, liquid, right? So for us, we actually have a patent on this process. So that's why all the other companies, when uh, they want to actually, uh, they want to bypass this uh, in possible infringement of our patent right, during this decontamination phase, they will deliberately bypass it by making it from a gas to a liquid. So you can micro, uh, micro droplets of particles, whatever you call it, uh, during this decontamination phase. And that's why you sometimes see uh, some droplets throughout the facility. So this is the main thing that differentiates us from the facility, uh, from the other competitors, and uh, yeah, we patent it, that's, that's fully trademark. So, just to add on, uh, well, it's actually a true vapor, but if you can see something, it's not really a vapor, right? And VHP is not a fog, right? And why I talk about that is because we do not want to be associated with uh, the damages after uh, we have actually have experience with liquid hydrogen peroxide. Can you imagine after after fumigation you have a uh, liquid hydrogen peroxide? You probably need to because it cro is corrosive. It will actually damage the equipment, uh, the panels, uh, the walls, and this is the last thing that you want to do after the fumigation. Okay, so how do we detect it? We actually use uh, two types. One is the chemical indicators. You actually will turn. Uh, let's say in a, is in a normal state is in, in a purple stage, but once uh, it's exposed to VHP, uh, it becomes from purple to yellow, right? So those you see here in yellow is actually are all have been exposed to VHP gas. And for biological indicators, we use uh, uh, Bacillus sterotomophilus, that's what I mentioned earlier. And we actually grow them in a growth media for about one, one week at 55 degrees Celsius, and there should be no growth, right? If there's growth, it shows that well, the fumigation wasn't done properly or there's some other issues. And how do we detect it, right? We actually use uh, these sensors called dragger sensors uh, to determine the, the concentration of VHP uh, left in the area, right? So basically, after uh, fumigation, we have to ensure that the amount of PPM in the level is actually in the area is about one PPM uh, before it's safe to enter the area. And we actually use dragger sensors right, to determine. <coughs> so just clarify on the service VHP part, it's actually a true gaseous process. Uh, it's compatible with a wide range of uh, materials. Uh, we have articles to back us up on that. And for, of course, every technology has limits, of course. We talk about the aeration part. As a gas, it may take a longer time to desorb from all surfaces, areas. And of course, no liquids, because liquids have a, uh, well, as a gas, it can't penetrate the liquid. Right? So now, case study, right? looking at Singapore, uh, animal facility. Well, we have this animal facility. Uh, we're looking at this study back uh, two years ago, uh, 
September. <coughs> and um, there's this owner, they actually had experienced some uh, pressure leaks and they wanted to actually have, they were wondering what kind of issue with it. So they wanted us to have a look. And well, basically we look at it uh, and we actually seal it and, and do some cleaning on the area and realize that actually they need uh, biodecontamination. So we actually have our team to actually roll out our equipment. We call it actually the victory model. All right. uh, we usually have aerators, which actually helps to bring out, hasten the aeration part of the process, as well as a tri-scale tri sensors, which are actually sensors that actually measure the concentration, um, temperature, as well as the relative humidity. So we actually started uh, the cycle within one month, well, uh, one month after the diagnosis. So this is the whole facility, it's a huge area, we're looking at around 8,000 uh, cubic meters. All right. And <coughs> we actually have a plan, right, before you start to do anything, you need to have a plan first. So we actually plan to have four generators uh, dispersed throughout the facility like that, right, uh, with the accompanying tri-skill centers. So we actually place it like that. Uh, for this one, we place it along the corridors. Okay. Okay. And you'll notice that some fans, all right, so VHP is a vapor. We actually want to help improve the circulation all right, by actually using fans to actually help distribute it to the other areas. Right. So more pictures. So after this uh, decontamination cycle, we actually have data uh, in, the, in, the, in the form of a, a graph that actually shows us how this whole cycle fell out. So uh, if you can see here, uh, it's quite faint, but basically this is the temperature and this is the RH. We actually want to keep it, uh, well, maintain it after it's reached the desired temperature. And uh, RH, like I said, below, uh, below 50 to 60% RH for a room. And for a roof, from a temperature wise, we're looking about at least above 20 degrees Celsius. And you can see that this, this graph here is actually the hy uh, hydrogen peroxide concentration uh, actually goes up and down as per the graph, uh, as per the chart that I showed you earlier, uh, the different four different phases. So you can see actually it shoots up in the beginning, and, and especially around here, there's a biodecontamination phase, and then after that, there'll be the aeration phase, where it takes the longest time. Please wrap. Okay, and we also have this uh, <coughs> uh, the, bio, uh, the chemical indicators that actually show the change in color from purple to yellow. Right, so this all yellow. So the outcome is everything, all the chemical indicators change color, and within two days as well as seven days, you can see the incubation results of the BIs. Uh, basically, there's no growth, which is good news. And we actually started the cycle at night, and it was completed in the next day. So it's actually good for facilities that are short time. The next one, of course, closer to home. We did one recently in India itself. Okay. Uh, this was actually done in the South India part. Uh, don't ask me where. If you are interested, you can, you can talk after this. Uh, <coughs> we actually did two zones. Uh, one is actually a service corridor, of this amount of space, and the other is a radio isotope room. Right, we actually did only using one VHP unit. Right. So as, as this, like what I mentioned again, before we do anything, you need to have a plan. So we look at the facility area. Uh, this is how the service, service corridor looks like. Uh, <coughs> and where we actually want to place our fans. And not just our fans, but also the biological indicators, as well as the chemical indicators, where to place them at different places. So to actually ensure that the VHP gas actually spreads throughout the facility. So this is just for the service corridor, and the other one is for the radio isotope room. So this is just a, a visual representation of how it looks like when you put the CIs, the chemical indicators, as well as the biological indicators. And the good thing for us is that we actually have a, a program that actually is, you actually monitor the VHP concentration in real time while it's doing decontamination as we speak. So you can actually go for a break or something like that and, and just make sure that everything's going for plan, right? So this, this software, you actually can download it to your laptop 
and you can actually access it safely from outside your facility. All right, of course, you need to make sure there's a wireless router, a wireless connection. Okay. So as it is, these are the cycle graphs. All right, so uh, we have one, actually, uh, two readings. One is from the, the, the unit itself. The picture unit actually has an inbuilt uh, tri-skill sensor. And the other one, we actually have an external tri-skill sensor. So there's three different set of readings, temperature, relative humidity, as well as the PPM, concentration. Both. So that's for the radio isotope area. And you can see there's a clear, uh, visible uh, uh, presence of VHP. And the BIs are, there's actually no growth. So basically all the chemical indicators change color. Right, and within 48 hours and 7 days incubation, everything was fine, no problem. Uh, we actually started in the afternoon for one of them, the service corridor, and it finished at night. Uh, there was a little hiccup for the other one, which is a radio isotope room, uh, because of a power trip, but we restarted it, we started the cycle, and it was very successfully done. Okay, so in conclusion, well, VHP is a highly effective decontamination method. Uh, for facilities, you can detect it and validate it uh, using the indicators, uh, as I mentioned, the CIs, the PIs, and the dragger sensors. And you actually monitor the, the process in real time uh, using actually our uh, proprietary software for this. Okay, so that's all. Short and sweet. I uh, hope I kept the time limit. Any questions? Yeah, one question. Distance development. Oh, resistance. Uh, sorry, you are talking about resistance against microbes or against uh, organs, materials? Or yeah, we have many, many uh, articles actually of that uh, on both materials. But I hope I'm answering your question. Um, on H2O2 compatibility with materials, as well as uh, uh, microbes. Yeah. No, no. Like, like I said, we actually use the most resistant microbe, which is thermal, uh, bestless thermal, uh, thermophiles. And we actually have all these other uh, studies uh, with different microbes. highly oxidative and ah. uh, as it is actually VHP is uh, ah, scientifically really proven to actually break down uh, microbes. So we actually have that data and you articles to back us up on that. So no such occurrence yet. Yeah. Most of the airborne pathogens reside in the ducting system. Yes. So whether your system can be used to decontaminate the ducts also? Yeah, actually that's a very good question. So we actually have uh, we actually have different different uh, uh, different units, right? So if you are looking at the contamination, the ducting, uh, we actually have an integrated VHP unit. What you see here is actually the mobile unit. With the integrated VHP unit, you actually can install it actually in the ASU area, and it actually will actually go through, well, go through the HVAC system uh, to actually decontaminate the piping as well as the ducting, <laughs> the ducting throughout the place. So do we need to shut down the AHU during that data decontamination process? No. Because if the air is continuously passing through, we are actually using for us. We are actually using the HVAC system right. to actually as a as a as a as a platform to actually spread uh, this VHP gas throughout. The so I I think you, I probably know where it coming from because when you talk about other technologies, they actually can't. You actually have to shut down the okay. the unit. But because VHP is a gas, can 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 go everywhere. Yeah. So actually for that, we actually have uh, several customers actually using <laughs> our VHP units in India. Now I invite Professor Pankaj Sharma and Dr. Harimohan Saini 
to please come on the dais and give momento to Mr. Nicholas Tan. Okay. Thank you.